Blues. This is the third instalment of the Manchester Youth Blues vlog with myself, Tom, Dave and Dan, the Manchester School admin team. We're going to be talking about the amazing Sergio Aguero, heartbreak for the poor and our current defensive options for the game at Carrow Road coming up in a few weeks on the 14th. We're going to talk a bit about VAR as well and our frustrations with that and what we think we can do better uh, for future, uh, future games and future seasons. And uh, of course, what record City are breaking at the moment and what we have a chance to break this season if we are lucky enough to do so. But yeah, we hope you like what we were putting out there, guys, and it's really appreciative if you would uh, like and share, and uh, especially comments of how you think we're doing. We really appreciate it. But yeah, have a listen and uh, let us know what you think. Thank you. But yeah, just wanted to have a, um, a quick catch up with you, obviously, on, on a Tuesday night rather than the normal Thursdays for us. So I appreciate you, you, you coming and taking the effort, lads. It's, uh, it's our third one now. I'm really starting to enjoy these. Aye, aye. These are brilliant. I love them. And I hope fans are getting something out of this as well. Yeah, are you finding yourself making little notes on your phone about things we can talk about? Do, 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 <laughs> is that, or is that just me? No, There's a whiteboard oh, no, at work. I have, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm basically Guardiola in my own home now because that's it. I'm watching all 95 minutes and making little notes as I go along. So As well as match of the day. Oh, do you get yeah. match of the day with States? Can you watch well, it? Well, we on? do. Yeah, I can get it because I, uh, I have a link to get onto BBC iPlayer. So I just, I mean, of course, I watch that as well. So Fabulous. Did you manage to watch the Brighton game then? Watch the whole Brighton game. Um, yeah. That was a good performance for me. Uh, much better than Bournemouth. Uh, I think we played a, a lot better. I don't mind that Brighton had a bit of the ball and they had the chances. It makes for a more exciting game. I yeah. don't think we were ever really in trouble. Uh, I, one point I really wanted to make tonight was, uh, apart from just a, a, a good performance, I really think Edison's coming in, into his own as not just a good keeper with the ball at his feet, but actually just a really good goalkeeper at, at, at spotting the danger and coming off his line and, and protecting that goal. And I think there's been so many plaudits about Edison from a standpoint of being able to pass the ball to feet. And I think it's overlooked what an actual just good shot stopper and goalkeeper he really is. Of course, he's still young. He's going to make an odd mistake. But Bournemouth last week and then Brighton uh, this weekend, I really thought, felt he came into his own as actually a just a really good goalkeeper as well. Yeah, I was I was concerned about Edison the first couple of uh, first couple of seasons. He seemed very, you know, he gave a couple of penalties away, didn't he? And I thought, oh, he's going to be one of them. He's going to be a bit rash and a bit mm -hmm. rash and come out too quickly. But he seems to have eradicated that from his game completely. I, I can still see him having that kind of impetuous decision and what may, maybe a mistake a season. But you know, he seems to have got right over that, and he's and he's looking to be fantastic, isn't he? For what we paid for him, crikey! Yeah. Easy. He's with top top three, top five keepers in the world for me easily. Because when you add in how we can block those shots now, his reading of the game. Yeah. No one's no one has a better kicker of the ball uh, to feet or into space than Edison. He's he's got. I suppose we also have to big up City's scouting network as well because, in all fairness, who actually had heard of Edison before he signed for City? Properly, I mean, it, it, apart from looking him up on YouTube videos or looking at where he's come from, he yeah. was relatively unknown. He's come straight into the squad, and like Dave said, it, I've never known a better keeper with the ball at his feet and just that calm and relaxed touch, just knock it to the side. You know, most keepers would panic and just lob it out. Somehow he just has the calm and collectiveness just to go, nope, there you go, done, pass, start an attacking move. You know, he's oh, it, fantastic. It's a really good shout that about the scouting network. I'll be I'll be brutally honest. Um, I'd say 60% of the players that come into City in the last couple of years I've never heard of until I heard them on the City radar. And before you know it, the world beaters. And it's like where have they where have they come from? I mean, I'm not playing Football Manager like I used to back in the day, but I used to know every every player on the on the map when Football Manager was around. But now players are linked to City I've never heard of. And before you know it, they're worth 50, 60, 70 million. And, and you know, they're, they're loving life at City and they seem happy at City and they're playing fantastically well. So, yeah, great shout about the scouting network. And uh, yeah. obviously, Sergio, what, 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 what a point, what a game he had. Man of the match again. You know, I, I said last week about David Silver. I think, I think he's the best footballer who's ever played at, at, at City. I, I really do. But, 
when you think of strikers, we've had some incredible strikers. The GOAT, I will still put him in there. You know, Franny Lee, uh, Young. But Aguero, for me, he just turns it in week in, week out. I mean, that second goal, the brilliant first mm. goal he scored, great, great team goal. That second one, the dip he got on the ball and just... Yeah. He's just relentless. He's just he's just on another planet. Um, it's getting better with age, isn't he? We're so lucky to add. We've had the best footballer of a generation, best midfielder of a generation, the best striker of a generation, one of the best central defenders of a generation, uh, 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 all at City. I mean, you just have to pinch yourself, don't you? Massively. Do you, do you know, I've looked at a stat before, and he's been, he's been with the late seasons now, and he's on 237 goals for the club. And it's and it's phenomenal that you, you, if you if you look at that he's, he's scored he scored in the Premier League now at the Etihad ninety nine goals and you know it's it's a shame we're playing at Carrow Road in our next game at Norwich to to drop up that hundred but you know what what some, well, the stats are coming off him are phenomenal I've seen it's ninety nine ninety nine Premier League goals at the Etihad only Thierry Henry at Highbury one hundred and fourteen and Wayne Rooney at United one hundred and one have scored more in a single venue at the Premier League you know. Sergio's got a hell of a chance this season to smash them out of the water and that would be fantastic to see wouldn't it so he's still only what 30, 31 31 30, 31 yeah that, 31. that's for a striker in today's football game he's I mean look at Zlatan obviously he played for uh, United but he's what 37, 38 fair enough in the, in the uh, MLS but Sergio's got more than the capability to go for another four years albeit it won't be at City I can see him being this season and next season I can see him calling next season his last. I, re- I really do. Um, oh, oh, I was, I'm hoping you weren't going to say that. Oh, yeah. Uh, but oh. it would take an arm and a leg to replace him. I, it's like the post I put up. So many people are agreeing and saying the same thing. He's, it's going to be very, very difficult to replace him if we can. I, don't, I can't see it myself. I'm, we'll get, get, get close. Well, one but, thing I guarantee, no. I think, was it 38 million quid we signed him for? We're, we're yeah. not going to yeah. have a player like that quality for that, that little money. No. No, I say little no. money, but you know what I mean, in, in the market these days. What do we got, What do we sign um, Jesus for? Do, we, do you remember? I can't remember what it how much was. It was 20, 25, 26 million. Yeah. Well, and again, in today's mm. market, it was a snip as well. Mm-hmm. But again, another one that relatively unheard of. Yeah. No, he <laughs> it, 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 it was banging them in, yeah, but. If you'd ask someone down the street, do you know him? They wouldn't have a clue, would they? No, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have a clue. And he's 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 not been that strike everyone thought he would be. I think we can all agree with that. He's not coming and absolutely demolished the league. He's getting going though, isn't he? I think I think this. Se- it's like I said before he was injured. Um, I said he would start against Bournemouth. Um, I really did see him uh, and Aguero both starting. Yeah. And it's just a shame about that injury. But I still think when he comes back, because Guardiola said something, I think it was just after the international, he started training again, hasn't he? I can see him getting his head down and scoring a lot more goals than he has done in the previous season this season. I really do. Well, you look at you look at Jesus and you look at where, where we are at the moment and you look at Jesus and he's sitting on the bench or wherever he's sitting and he's mm. seen City score 14 goals in the last four matches. He's thinking, hang on a minute. Where am I? Where am I fitted into this? You know, mm. it's um, well, the, the stat. The stat I read before was we've only we've only bettered the 14 goals in the first four games in the 2011-2012 season, and that was 15 goals scored. And that's phenomenal. That's mm. three and a half goals per game. Absolutely phenomenal. I mean, we, we're going to be we've got a very good chance of breaking more records this season if we carry on with that. It's ridiculous, and Pep has full trust in Aguero, and I think we'll see the writing on the wall that Aguero is maybe coming towards the end of his City career when we buy another striker. Because we keep thinking every summer or every transfer window, he's going to go out and buy another striker because we've only got Aguero and uh, Jesus. And he never does. Mm. Because And that, to me, suggests that he knows that he's got Aguero for at least a couple more years yet. And in that time, that's going to give him the flexibility to bring in, hopefully, another... Aguero from somewhere, but I don't think he's panicked at the moment because he's there, he's banging in goals, he's fit, he's probably fitter Aguero now than he ever has been because of the training that that uh, Pep and team make them do. Uh, Jesus plays well, we're getting goals from midfield, plenty of goals from midfield as well, so 
just just like Aguero does what he does so well, which is putting the ball in the back of the net over and over and over again. Who, who would be our third choice striker then? I mean, you, you've got to look at stri- proper striker. I'm not talking like you're Sterling and you're Sterling in the false position, but somebody who's an out and out striker at the club. I, I can't think of, of many other. I mean, we've got, we've got Tommy Doyle, haven't we, in the reserves? He seems to be banging in, but he's nowhere near Premier League level yet. No. Is there anyone else that you can think of that's ready to take a step up if Jesus or Sergio wasn't there? No. I can't. The only person. Oh, go on, then. No, I was going to say, I can't think of anyone apart from is the long term vision with Zane, because he's. He reminds me a lot of Thierry Henry, uh, yeah. Zane. Yeah. The, is maybe the thinking going to be that over a period of time, knock on wood, he stays because I don't want him going anywhere when he recovers from his injury. Maybe that's he's going to shift him more inside because he can. He knows where the back of the net is, Zane, and he's got that speed. So I don't know. Maybe. Remember that goal we scored against Liverpool last season? That was a belt of one sick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's Rad's cross, and yeah, yeah just, just just found the other side of the net really, really well. But yeah, no, it's um, it's an interesting one, and it's it's funny that you what you said about you can see Pep being happy with Sergio and Sergio potentially not going anytime soon because we're not rushing and buying a striker. When you start to see the jungle drums being beaten about potential players coming in, that's when you might think to yourself, "Oh, hang on a minute, something's happening there." But I've heard nothing about any any potential replacements, and I think we are really lucky in the in the depth and strength we've got in our midfield to to be able to. To score goals. I mean, Mares is somebody that I've been watching this season, thinking right, this is his season to shine. Mm-hmm. And, he's, and he and he and he had a couple of good chances um, that I saw in the game, and it was five chances he created as well for the team as well. He, he's going to have a cracking season. He's going to be a relentless player as long as he keeps doing the way he's doing. Yeah, I think I think he set up the second goal. I think yeah, Sergio's first. He basically set up that. Um, yeah, he's got the bit between his teeth. And that was a good thing that Pep just does this so well. You know, you saw in the media over the last few days that he's been talking Mares up as well and telling him, you know, what a good player he is, that he's so good in training. He likes to get on the... He, he, he said something like Mares hates it when he doesn't have the ball. Like he was really giving him a push. And that there's no there's no one better than that. Than, than Pep, but really giving his players that little bit of a push that they need. And Mares probably knew himself he needed a little bit of a push. Last season was a bedding in period. This season he's got to shine, particularly with Zane out. And I, I think he had a decent game on on Saturday. I really do. What what I like about the players that were signing is it makes me laugh when I see the likes of Sanchez. Obviously he's gone to he's gone to Inter now, but I get the feeling that the players we've tried to sign and we've not signed. They're not accepting that they can do better. They always seem, in my opinion anyway, they always seem to be able to or think they can come in and, and just hit the, hit the first team and just crack on with the first team, whereas Pep just wants to bring them in and mould them as best possible, remould them and churn them out again to a, to a better player. And I'm just thinking the players that we've not signed, that what an opportunity they've missed. Are an opportunity to make themselves better and better players? I mean, obviously, it's not worked out for, for Sanchez at United, but I'm absolutely convinced he's going to go to Inter and do really well for them just because he, he has that fresh opportunity and, and, and he'll start scoring. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, we, we seem to be doing all right against Brighton, don't we, in the league? We've um, we've not lost against them. <laughs> Which, so, uh, can we play you every week, please? Which is great. We've and banged in a few against them, that's for sure. But, yeah, nice all-round performance for me uh, on Saturday. Uh, De Bruyne. Don't think he hit a straight pass. Uh, great goal. He's really got the bit between his teeth, uh, De Bruyne, as we all all said on on the calls that he he wants to go places with City this season. And you know we were going to mention Rodri tonight as well. And I thought Rodri had a sensational game. Was he a little bit of fault for Laporte? And I know we're going to speak about Laporte a little bit. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. a bit Zinchenko. It was Rodri could have tracked back, but I think you've got some stats there as well, Tom, on Rodri. That you know, it's 97%, you know, passing rate or something like that. On, I, I think I said on a post that once Rodri adds a few goals to his game as well, which he will, those goals will come. He'll, he'll bang in five or six goals for us, and they'll probably be important ones this season. He's already the complete midfielder, and he's only been with us for two months. It's unbelievable. Yeah, Fitting so well. Again, another one that just gets their head down and cracks on and works hard. And again, another player that I didn't know about two seasons ago who seems to have just dropped in off the radar is like, he's a fantastic player and he fits perfectly well. Our, our scouting network, great shout down about our scouting network. They just seem to be able to get the right personality 
we can mould the player around. You've got a good base base player knowledge. That's fantastic. But the personality seems to be so key to City's success. Mm-hmm. It's, well, it's, we yeah. haven't had a, a, one of those players that thought they're bigger than the club for a long, long time now, have we? I mean, they're all level-headed. They all agree, look, we can all be the same quality here. Just one one game might need to step one player up. One player might know he needs to give his all. But it's it's going back to like Sergio. It, we all know him for scoring goals, but that's like I say, this season so far, he's tracked back so much more helping in that midfield. They all have. The wingers have come in. The, for, the back line's got forward a bit more. You know, like I say, Rodri, he, he, he's that missing piece. You know, albeit we've got Fernandinho, but I don't. I'd even go to say, say if Rodri's gonna boss that midfield more than the likes of Fernandinho and more than the likes of Yaya Torre, just for the, being that solid figure. You know, he's that he's that link in play. But they've all just. It's just all stepped up, you know. We we haven't had a player that's thought, do you know what? I'm better than this. I I should be playing. I'm going to sit on the bench and sulk. Mares, like you say, is a good shout. You know, it's I saw that post uh, you mentioned about Pep saying he, he he's almost upset when he's not on the ball on the training pitch, and that's what that's what City's about, isn't it? Yeah, that we play a fantastic, beautiful football. And all the players embrace what Pep's done. You know, you, you can't fault him, really, can you? Oh, you, you really Absolutely can't. Not. You, you see, alongside Mares, we're so lucky. We've got Silva, which which we all know and love, and Kevin De Bruyne has been involved in uh, what's what's the starting on two seconds. His last seven Premier League starts, in, he's been involved in nine goals. It's wow. ridiculous. And how, how just how, ridiculous. How, how 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 injured was he last season? If he can mm. stay fit this season, never mind conceding. If we go forward with with Silva, Mares. Sterling, Kevin De Bruyne, Aguero, crikey, we're, we're going to be the old Brazil team, aren't we? We'll score ten, and we might concede seven, but you know we'll still win. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I hope we'll be that close. <laughs> I, said, I said before the season started, and it and it's there in in writing that if De Bruyne stays injury free, he's PFA Player of the Year for me. Yeah, he he he, he will be because you can just see this determination in his face. And he didn't have his greatest game last week at Bournemouth, but he still set one up. He, he still did all right. And then a couple of days ago, he was just back to his best. He's just phenomenal. What a player. Absolutely right. Go on, then. We're going to have to talk about it, aren't we? Our little, our little Frenchman. Oh, um, oh, it's killer, isn't it? Poor lad. Devast- devastated on so many levels for him, and uh, as much as anything else that... He's wanted to play for his country, and oh. Deschamps has ignored this, and then at last seen the light and uh, um, and brought him in, and then and then that happens. I, I, my heart just goes out to him from a from a city perspective. Does it put us at a little bit of a disadvantage, possibly? But Fernandinho will fill in. You know, Guardiola said that he might move it. You know, Walker uh, on the inside. Yeah, and uh, and yeah. Cancelo there. There's, there's things that we can do, and I think Pep said again that this is why we have a big squad, um, and he likes players, as we all know, who can play in a variety of positions. Um, a, absolute huge loss. You know, he's our new company. I think we, us Blues all, all knew that, uh, but we still don't know. I'm I'm typing in Laporte injury every two minutes into Google <laughs> and to see if there's anything coming up. It doesn't look good. No. Um, but um, I, I think we'll cope, and we coped last year without De Bruyne. And, you know, you've seen these clips now with, with company kind of rallying the team last season when we had injuries. I think we'll do the same again. I think we'll just, I think David Silver or one of those vocal people in the dressing room will go, look, we've lost him, but we're a brilliant team. We, let's just get on with it. And let's, if you look at that documentary a couple of seasons ago on Amazon, what Guardiola was saying is, we're, we're going to win this for David Silva, uh, you know, when when his baby was, was sick. Yeah, and yeah, I think he's yeah. going to have the same thing again. I think, you know, they wore those shirts a couple of weeks ago for Zane in support of him. I think it's just going to be the same rallying call again of, look, he's out, let's support him. We know what a great player he is, he'll come back stronger, but let's, let's win this for Laporte. The, the, the biggest thing I want to see is, yeah, right, we spent... Millions and millions and millions on, on defenders. There's there's no there's no getting away from that. 
But what I want in our team is I want to see that mentality of one of the players to step up like Sintento's done. You know, yeah. he, as far as I'm concerned, 18 months ago, he was he was gone to Wolves for 13 million quid. And, he, and all of a sudden he was like, no, not today. I'm staying. I'm fighting. And now he's a regular. I'd question him over Mendy. If Mendy if Mendy's fully fit as he's near or thereabouts, we can't take the centre out of the team. He's been too good. I just want one of our centre backs to stand up. I hope it's Otter Mendy because he's got the raw talent, but he's always got a mistake in him. I think we can all accept that. Yeah. I just want him or somebody else to stand up and go, do you know what? Yeah, this has happened. This is my time. I'm in now. And, and you know, not to look back. And that'll just make us so much more of a stronger unit to have that person fighting and saying, this is my moment. This is my time. I know we've lost a couple of defenders recently, haven't we? Um, who we sold. Who's the lad we've just sold? Is it Frimpong? So Frimpong's up Frimpong, to Celtic yeah. now. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, a couple, a couple of uh, who's, the, who's the other defender we've, we've recently let go. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I just want somebody else to stand up and go. Do you know what? Now's my time. The forte is gone. That's fine. We're going to miss him five, six months, whatever it might be. But you know, now's my time and my opportunity. And uh, you know what? I, I, it's funny because I had a chat with my yeah, my brother the other day. And any chance of company coming back for the end of season and on loan for us for a couple of months? Would Would you take that? Could you imagine? I, I'd I have him back in a, yeah. in a heartbeat. Yeah. What's he doing at the minute? He's all going a bit Pete Tong on the management side of things, aren't it? And I think they they won they won on Saturday. Mm. That's their first win of the season, and obviously he was injured. So I think he took over managing duties again at, at, uh, at the weekend. So, but oh my God, yeah, it'd be the second coming, wouldn't it? If you know, we turn around in January and said. Vinny's coming back for the final oh, five be, months of the season. It would be, it would be <laughs> the, the streets will be lined, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. well, and I tell you what, every single City fan would drive to Manchester Airport, pick him up and take him as well. Mm. I tell you what, I'd drive to Belgium. It's not that far in, in reality to get a solid defender for City. But, you know, I, I think, you know, it's that's pie in the sky stuff, isn't it? I can't really see that happening. But I just I just love to see an Otamendi and just show us what he can actually do and, and or, or another defender to come back and just show us what they can actually do and what they can actually be. I mean, yeah, let's face it, Webster, uh, was it Webster who tackled Laporte? I think it was Laporte that tackled Webster, really. Um, I think we could say it was pretty much Laporte's fault, but would, would you blame Rodri or anyone else in that midfield for not making that tactical foul? Or, you know, is there any blame there for, for any other players in our team? They were saying it on Match of the Day, though, weren't they? I, I can't remember who, who was reviewing it. And they, they said, well, Rodri should have made a tactical foul. It's in, almost impossible to see. Well, it is impossible to have known Laporte was going to get injured. Exactly. It, it's the thing of a centre-back. They're there to put the bodies on the line. Vinny did it. Laporte's built like Vinny almost. You know, he, he, he knew he was going to go in for that tackle. Win or lose it. Injury or no injury. He needed to get to that ball. And for me, yes, it's unlucky, but it's like you say, maybe this is almost, albeit the worst possible thing to happen for a back line, probably one of the best because Otamendi or John Stones can step up now and say, this is my time, like you were saying. And for me, that's John Stones. I, I, I see him Agreed. being, and I probably get a lot of stick from this on the page, I can see John Stones, if he stays at City until he's 30, 32 onwards City's captain I, I really do and going back to the Rodri thing it's it's one of them it, it'll happen every team will get injuries just we we're unlucky that we've got another player out potentially for a long time but it's it's one of them you know if he didn't make the challenge Laporte was going to make it if Laporte didn't make it the guy would have been through one goal one on one with the keeper you know, I, it's, it's... No, I, I don't think you should get any stick for saying potential John Stones yeah. captain either. He's, he's a fantastic talent. Is is Pep's ideal ball playing centre half? Is is he is he still got a knock? Is that why he's not been featuring recently? Is he still how long is he out for? Yeah, he's 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 picked up a, a little knock um, a couple of games ago. Um, it, it, I think it was after the Community Shield. He said he wasn't hundred percent fit. Okay. Uh, but he, he'd, he'd aggravated a, a summer injury. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm sure I've read that up somewhere. Uh, well, but he, 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 he should be back. Yeah, he's got it's a days. it's a muscle injury or something. It's yeah. just one of those little niggly things. But I think with Stones that the longer Guardiola stays at City and can manage him, it, it's quite obvious to me that Guardiola really rates him. Yeah. Knows that he's got to iron out a few more things in his game. 
but he's as Dan says, he's got all the potential in the world. And give him another couple of years, he probably will be at, at a Vincent Company level. Yeah, so uh, just got to give him time. Our, our, our best back four for, for the Norwich game, then you'd think is um, Walker, Stones, hopefully Otamendi and Zitenko. Can you can you see any change in that if if everyone stays fit? I'd go Walker centre back personally. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I really do. It's it's it, although Puki is on form of his life at the moment. Fernandinho is not tall enough. He's fantastic. You know he can win a ball with his eyes closed, but in terms of the air, he, he's a 50-50, if not less, an advantage of winning a ball in the air. And Pookie's got everything as a striker if he plays. That is, mm. um, which you can't see him not being played on the form yeah, he is. But Walker's got the height, he's got the aggression to get up there, and I think it, it's more of a. If Stones is fit, go ahead. But I don't want to rush Stones back in with Laporte being out. You know, I'd rather us play safe, even if we get a draw, even if we get a loss, just to make sure Stones is a hundred percent fit, so we can go on a bit further than rather than one game and aggravate that injury even more but yeah I don't want to chuck in at the deep end do you no 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 so you'd go Cancelo at right back then New Orleans. yeah 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 Cancelo it's Walker Otamendi and... yeah yeah, yeah. He, he, he's like needs the game time doesn't he he's, 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 he's the price tag sums up he needs the game time doesn't he yeah, no, it's, yeah. It, it could be it could be the ideal opportunity for him to, to step into the breach and we know Walker's played in that position before and he's quick mm-hmm. enough isn't he do you know what Otamendi's not the quickest so actually putting Walker at that centre back position to, to cover for any mistakes Otamendi might make is a really good shout actually really yeah, so Otamendi's stepped it up so far for me this season he's looked so completely albeit he's, everyone knows he's prone for the mistake or two he's, he looks to me a completely different player from past seasons he's he's winning <laughs> challenges more than I think he's, he's started attacking play a lot better as well so maybe like I say bringing Walker in like you say a bit more of speed Otamendi can stay back and do these defensive challenges albeit don't give away a a penalty or a free kick being the last man or anything like that. But no, I, I agree. The pace on Walker will, will, will help him out even more. It might even be more of an advantage than having Stones in. You never know. Oh, Guardiola, though, trusting him, you know. Absolutely. Fingers crossed. So, uh, what was, what's your predictions, um, Carrow Road? Um, so, I'll firstly say, we're just going back to Walker, that I think with him, I think he started off the season incredibly well. Probably the best he started any season for City. He just, he's not got his England place, which still stuns me considering this, the start he's had to his season. But I think this is an opportunity to him to show his versatility now. And I think he will play. I think he will play at Carrow Road at centre-back, uh, particularly if Stones isn't 100% fit and Cancelo will get a chance and Walker can show everyone just, just what a good footballer he is. I'll go 3-1 City. Nice. Come on, Dan, what are you going for? Well, I, I went for a, a Brighton for Ashen of 8 nil dinner and that didn't really work <laughs> out. So I might, I might go for a more consolidated effort of about 9-1 or something like that. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. No, I'd, I'd say it'll be a, a, the, the closest game of the game. Well, obviously, there's only Bournemouth to compare as a close game so far, but I, I'd go 2-1 City. 2-1 City. Close. 2-1 or 2-2. I can, I can see them causing us quite an upset. I really do, but... Edging more to two one for me. It's going to be a close game. You know what I'm like. I don't do predictions, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm going to keep it at that. But it's a great shout about Walker not getting in the England squad. Mm. I thought to myself, is this something to do with you know he's guaranteed to be playing? Is this a bit of a trial to test all the other people? Then I realised it's actually a, a, a proper game. It wasn't a friendly. <laughs> so I was like, hang no. on, what's this all about? What what what's your thoughts on that then? Walker not with England. What's I, I just, I, my head's I don't back. Get it. Like, I, I, I just simply don't understand it's it. If friendly, Walker... It's not friendly, is it? Before I'm... It's not no, friendly. this is... Okay. No, no. It's... Qualifiers, right? Yeah, qualifiers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't get my head around that. If it was a friendly and kind of Southgate's kind of gone, you know what, Walker, you're guaranteed. I want to try a few more faces, play for City, see you later. But to drop him completely, I, yeah, it baffled me that. I have no idea why. If he'd have had a really poor start to the season... You know, been sent off or, you know, just let, let in a couple of stupid goals, made mistakes. That I can see it because I very much feel as England manager, you should be picking on performance, not on what club they play for, which has always been, you know, from my time, <laughs> it's, it's always been the, the same thing with England managers. They pick United and Liverpool players 
however good or bad they are. And I thought this was a chance this time that, no, we, we, we've got a manager who's actually going to look at performance. And he obviously hasn't done, because if you've not seen how well Walker has played this season from Community Shield and then the first four games, you, you're obviously not watching because he's been sensational. Yeah, it's no, it was no surprise to me that Wan-Bissaka signed for United. And, oh, two weeks later, England call-up. Oh, right, OK. That's, 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 he's that's... out injured now, though, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> is yeah. He? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> To go, go back to that point about um, him not being picked primarily back in the day because he would have been a City player and not a Man United Liverpool player. I had a, a chat with a friend of mine um, the other day when it was released and he still reckons there's a little bit of a bias about it because of the players he plays with. If you put Walker in the Man United team now or a Liverpool team, well, we won't, if everyone bigs up Liverpool, don't they? say Arsenal or someone like that, another top six team, he'd yeah. get in for me. I, I re- honestly do think he'd get in. I think we were discussing it because he's got De Bruyne, he's got Rodri in that midfield to help him out should he, he come under a bit of attack, you know, so, so one of these players, world-class players track him back to help him out. And that's what other, well, especially Man United, don't have this quality helping him out, you know, and I, I do understand that point. It still baffles me. He should have been in because I think he's going more for youth over experience. But like you say, Walker's had a fantastic start to the season. You can't leave him out. You really can't. You know, he's only, what, 28, 29? I suppose the, the only plus point is, listen, he's not playing. Less chance of getting injured. Yeah, exactly, exactly. He's going to be chomping at the bit to prove Southgate wrong for whatever reason. He's to... Or maybe Pep's had a word with Southgate and said, actually, you know what, we need him fit. Don't play him. Can you see that? Could you see that? Nah. He's not one to meddle in international peppers. So, no. No, no he, quick. He loves all his players out doing whatever he wants. So it's, it's his philosophy, though, isn't it? Players, any game you want, as long as you're good enough, prove your worth, prove your best, have the time of your life, you know, as long as you come back fit and give me more than 100% than what you have done everyone else. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd take my cap off to Trippier. Um, going to Atletico Madrid, I yes. think great, I think great. he's gone. You know, very lad, he's gone abroad to one of the best teams in the world, and he's cementing that right back position. From what I'm reading, that he's doing really well, and he's decided he's going to get back in into that England squad. And I think Walker will do the same thing. And I think having that versatility at the back, which we're going to need now, I, I I'll be amazed if he doesn't get back in the England team. I, I feel bad for him and I certainly feel bad for Laporte with everything that's happened with him when he was just about to start his his international career Yeah, no, I completely agree Completely agree, well I think they're, uh, we should wrap it up here chaps, unless you've got anything else to say we've had a, we've had a good good old session there oh, We've got to mention something on behalf of uh, other admin Kieran um, we've got to sort of demolish VAR or something yeah. like that oh. <laughs> you see. Well, We had a game without VAR we didn't have anything to do with VAR in Brighton did we? No, we had uh, we had Newcastle scored a handball own goal. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Aston- but there was that challenge. Um, was it Leicester that was reviewed for Telemans' his, um, high boot? That for me, the <laughs> VAR have got that completely wrong. He should have been sent off. What did he do? What happened? He, he went to um, I can't remember who had the uh, the ball uh, and the opposition, but he went in to challenge. And went completely over the ball. I mean, he, he could probably get another football underneath his foot compared to the ball, and went straight into the shin, just to the side of the shin of this player. He could easily have broken his leg without a doubt. It was a very dangerous challenge. And VAR even looked at it and said, "Wasn't even worth a yellow according to them." You know, it's it's, it's it, but it's one of them. I said it. You know my views on it. it it's not consistent enough, but. We've had our goals. We won 5 0 without VAR introduction. You know, get rid of VAR. We, we can beat teams 5 6 0, you know. Well, this is it. I mean, what, what riles me is the, is the, uh, the Newcastle goal. Uh, did, you, did you see the Newcastle goal? It came, in, yeah. came, came off um, a hand and the player scored and it was given. It was just obviously against the Spurs game. It was completely total opposite of what happened at the Spurs game for City. It was just one of them. It's just, I don't understand. Okay, fantastic. The thing is, I'm glad it went in because it was against Spurs. I think it's about time for a bit of payback, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> it's just one of them. It's like, if VAR is going to be so anal about it and, you know, we, we are God and this is it now, right, fine. 
that's fine. Same for everybody. That'd be really nice. That'd be mm. really nice. And that that's what I'm not seeing at the moment. And people are still saying about, you know, potential hiccups and, you know, gremlins in the system and stuff like that. No, it, it's, it's unacceptable. It's absolutely yeah. acceptable to have this. That that penalty that, that uh, was it Ashton Villa didn't get. And that yeah. Penalty, the leg taken. That, 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 was, that was stupid. That was... Is, what is the point in having VAR if you cannot help the referee? And mm. VAR's there purely to back up what the referee's saying. And it's just like, you know, if the referee's wrong, they're wrong. Don't, you know, don't forget about it. Don't agree with them. If, if someone's wrong and the player's wrong, if you go to your job, you do something wrong and someone tells you you've done something wrong, it's fantastic. It's a learning curve. You take that experience and move from it. If you've got the video evidence to say, actually, here's why you did it wrong, and let's take it back and give the, per- the team a penalty. If you've got that technology, use it. What is the point in having it and not using it? That's I'm so I can, I'm feeling myself building up about it. I'm supposed to be going to bed soon. I won't be able to sleep now. Half <laughs> yeah. night in bed, sir. Go on. <laughs> I think you. I, I think you hit the. I think you hit the nail on the head. Really, that they've obviously introduced it too soon, and it they can't say. We need to, you know, it's not quite right yet. We're still working our way. You don't do that in the biggest league in the world. If it's not ready, then keep testing it before you bring it into the Premier League. That's what's driving me insane. There's, the inconsistency is ridiculous. And this seems to be down to the referee as well when he's deciding whether he, he needs to go to VAR or not. Well, you, you go, because if you've got 40,000 fans screaming you should probably take a look at what's going on rather than that being the ultimate decision of, no, nah, I'm just going to let that one slide and get on with the game. You know, Kane, by by the right of the law right now, Kane should have had a penalty uh, against uh, Arsenal uh, on Sunday. He should have done. And, he, and he, I think Kane made a really good point. He said, if that had been a challenge on the halfway line, yeah, yeah. I, would have got, I would have got the free kick. So what's the difference when, I, when I'm in the box? Like the referee just told him to get up as if he'd been, and if he thought he was simulating, well, you should have sent Kane off then, because aren't they supposed to get a straight red if they simulate a dive now in the box? This just the inconsistency is ridiculous for me. Take it away, test it, get it right before you bring it back. If you were a referee in this day and age, there's obviously things that we're not privy to, there's stuff in the background that, we're, that there's conversations going on that we will never know about within the FA, but if you were a referee, I'm going to put myself in their shoes, and if I'd missed a howl of a mistake or something like that, I'd love somebody in my ear to say, Tom, that was a penalty. Right, fantastic, great, penalty. And then no one's going to talk about it then. Then VAR's doing its job for me. I can't mm-hmm. understand if you've got that technology, why I don't use it? Rather than like three millimetres offside because you, your nostril hair's over the line. by Ridiculous. I don't, I don't get it. I really don't get that's, it. That's one of the rules that really does annoy me. It's, it's, you know, if a shoulder's offside, off, an, an elbow's offside. I think there was one brought back at first weekend, match day weekend, or something like that. One was brought back with a shoulder offside. Still... You can't score from your shoulder anyway. So if it had gone in off, the, off off your elbow, sorry, not your shoulder. If it had gone off your elbow, it would have been brought back for a disallowed goal anyway. So why not just let the play continue? If it was a perfectly legitimate goal scored at the foot, it's not the elbow. And I think I think Sterling got done for that with a shoulder, didn't he? Did yeah. yeah. First game, first it's, game. It's, it's the most. It's the rules. The rules are fantastic, but there's bent in some of them. And they're ridiculous. It's, it's you know, but it's like going back to what Dave said. VAR aside, it's different for every referee. You know, a challenge in the box is completely different to a challenge outside the box, in yeah. according to some referees. And that, that's the problem. I think that's the reason VAR needed another season. They need to concentrate more on the referee. The referees have got the hardest job on the pitch. They really do. You can say players yeah. struggle to bend one in from into the top corner on a wet, cold night, cold night in Stoke. It don't matter about that. The referee's doing all this running forward and backwards. He's got to get a decision that's very far in front of him sometimes with players in his ears. The need to concentrate on that first before making his job even harder by bringing something that he's not in control of to to manage a game. It's unfair. I feel for the referees, I do. But at the same time, Vaz, it's not ready. It really isn't. It's funny because I, I, I was watching... As, as you do, I, I watched the um, the Sky Sports vault for the um, when we when we won the league against QPR, mm. 
and the, the tackle against Aguero before he scored. I just I, as soon as he hit the ball and the tackle kick was it and was it a newer who tackled who tried to tackle him? I think it was, yeah. I just I just keep thinking to myself, do you know what? We wouldn't have had that moment because that would have been gone back and they would have had that VAR and you see him running off with his shirt and stuff like that. I just can't think to myself, what if VAR was then and this happened again? What would have been brought back and would we have been able to celebrate as well we did? And I know I was with I was with, I was with four or five families, members of my family that day and that experience, I'll never forget the rest of my life. There's an opportunity where that, that, that might happen to another club, hopefully not City with a last minute win of the league, but that might be ruined by because of 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 the the rules that have been brought into play that, that just aren't consistent. And I hope they sort it out because it's a fantastic idea. I mean, the goal line technology is phenomenal. Whether the ball mm. goes over the line or not, that's perfect. That's exactly what we should have. But they just don't seem to be able to get the VAR decisions right at the moment. Someone just needs a bit of a tweak to get them on 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 the right page with what the referees are doing. And for it's me, a it can work. For me, the next step shouldn't have been VAR. I've always been a fan of one thing, and that's referee body cams. It works in other sports. I really do think that it may not affect the game. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it's not It's not like a VAR where the referee sees something on his body cam, but the referee is looking completely different and they bring it back. That, for me, will help referees understand more. It's, it's hard, hard to explain, but I, I, I'm pretty sure you know what I mean. It's... It's, I think that should have been the next step, just to sort of get an understanding from other points of view. Look, this is happening there and everything else is happening. It shows the the hard job that the referees have to deal with. You know, two incidents can happen at the same time and he's looking at one and one's more important than the other. It should have been a penalty to win a game. But I, I'm a big fan it should have been the body cam for me. That, it may not implement this thing. When, you, when you're watching a game and you think the referee was only four yards away, why didn't he give that? He's looking yeah, right at exactly. him. Actually, when you have the body cam to see that four yards, it might not be a direct line of sight to the incident. Exactly. So, yeah, it's a really exactly. good point, actually. I'd love to have the mic'd up as well. Body cams are mic'd up. That'd be a great experience to listen to, actually, on the game itself. Yeah, yeah it's uh, VAR for me. It's just, just, I think I mentioned this last week, it's taken the emotion out of it. And that, to your point, Tom, about that final, literally final kick of the season, you know, in Aguero, the emotion for every City fan then was just ridiculous imagine if that had been bar mm -hmm. it just would have taken it all out and you know so, uh, many people are saying now that if this continues and gets worse then there's going to be some monumental goal scored in a in a monumental fixture and no one will celebrate because they'll be that panicked that oh my god it's going to go to var and we don't yeah. know if this is going to be a goal or not it, it's it's going to take all the emotion out of it and football for me is is all about emotion, whether that is the, the highs that we're able to experience right now as City fans or those crushing lows when we were in the old second division, you know, and watching, you know, watching Oldham, you know, going to Boundary Park or what, whatever it is. And but that's emotion as well. I, I yeah. still maintain I had the best years of my life as a City fan in the Kipax. We didn't win anything, but that, but that emotion that we had in there and, you know, there's a line of policemen and then the United fans are in the in the next one over and lobbing yeah. coins at you or whatever. It never that's emotion for me and that's what that's what football's all about mm. and this far is taking all of that away. I don't like it. I, I found a ticket stub before. I was I'm going through I'm going through my uh, all my all my, all my stuff and I found a ticket stub from when we played Stockport County away at Edgeley. And we and we we lost four one. And this is in two thousand and this is the is the I remember we signed Paolo One Shop, I think, a week before, and George Weir was about to sign for us, or something along those lines. Yeah. I remember standing up behind the goals, and you know that was one of the best. You know, it was a great game to go. A few, few beers before and a few beers afterwards. We lost, you know, we didn't care because it was City, and it's just what it's just you just get on with it, don't you? How times are different from from then to they are now. It's bizarre, really, how much we've changed in the twenty odd years, and bizarre, absolutely mental. It, it's unbelievable. So talking of One Shop, so I. We bought a house in Hyde, and my wife didn't know anything about the fact that that's where City used to play their reserve games in, yeah. in Hyde. So I'd be at Main Road on a on a Saturday or Sunday, and then during the week I'd go to um, I'd go to Hyde's ground as well. And if you remember, One Chop was always injured, always injured. He only ever played about forty games for us, I think. I was always sat next to him. Or <laughs> it, it Hyde. I mean, because. You know, you'd probably get about four or five hundred people show up or something like that. But yeah, Paolo Wanchop, I sat next to him on many occasions at Hyde United's ground. And a, a really nice lad as well. 
lost in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy legs. Yeah. <laughs> I remember his debut. I think he, uh, at Main Road, I think he banged in. We beat, who did we play? I think we were playing Sunderland. And I think we won four. 4-1, I think he got a hat-trick. He got two or three goals, yeah. and every City fan was like, Are you, who, who the hell have we signed here? He's, he's bloody brilliant. Yeah, Absolutely. and then he got, and he was injured the next game or something like that, but he was that sort of player. He'd signed for a club, bang in seven goals right away, and then and then be injured. Amazing. Oh, amazing. Power one shot. Memories, eh? I've still got uh -huh. a with his name on. It's got my, uh, my guard and my uh, gate keys off. Great. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Thanks as always, lads. I think we're, uh, you know, for, some, for, for not wanting to talk about VAR, we'll give it a good 15 minutes there, you know. <laughs> there you go, Kieran. See you, lad. <laughs> oh, you, Kieran. oh, smashing. Are you, are you happy with everything, lads? Anything else to say? Perfect for me, that. Perfect. Did we mention VAR? I think, uh, <laughs> we'll, men we'll mention it next time. We'll, we'll, have, a, we'll right. have a session on VAR next time, shall we? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Hopefully, hopefully not with England it's been talking about. But uh, no, have, have a fantastic week, lads, and I'll uh, speak to you next week. Talk next week. Right. See you till we die. All best, lads. Right. Definitely. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.